Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked for this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have the Enoto, and this is the British Museum Great Court. We have a Visconti Opera Master, and this is the Antarctica. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Demo Stones in Sapphire Blue. We have a Visconti Daedalus. We have a Visconti Opera Master Savannah. We have a Yard of Lead, and this is the Viceroy Grand in the Victorian. We have another Yard of Lead, Viceroy Grand, and this is in the Barley or Barley Corn. We have a Classic Pens LB5KN. We have a Visconti St. Basil, and we have a Visconti Opera Master Stardust. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So the first pen here is the Anoto, and this is the British Museum, and it's a great court. Now, this is a very, very heavy pen, and I want to say that if I hold it like this, it's just going to go like that. It, it is a very heavy pen. You do need to hold this with two hands. It's ninety around 95 grams in weight. Uh, it has this lovely domed effect going here on the cap finial, and you can also see how that that uh, is shown off there as well on the side or edge of that cap finial. You have the Enoto clip, and it does say uh, the British Museum there. Now, this is solid silver, but it's actually got a, uh, a vitreous a vermeil um, enamel on there. So this is a very beautiful blue enamel, uh, which actually depicts really the uh, viewing window or ceiling of uh, the British Museum's writing room. Beautiful, beautiful material. Uh, these are made in the UK by Noto or by silversmiths and goldsmiths in the Birmingham quarter uh, of the UK for Noto, And these are made to really, really good quality. Uh, I have a number of Noto pens now. Uh, quite a few of these now. I, ha I have three of them are solid silver pens. And I really have to say they are beautifully made. Uh, quality control um, to the finest uh, pens really really in awe how good these are uh, comes with a solid silver section it is a cartridge converter pen has an Anoto number seven size 18 karat gold nib this one's a fine uh, you can't post the caps on these uh, it's not designed to do so uh, but uh, this is a long pen anyway you're not really if you want to make your pen longer or weightier, you're not going to want to do it with this because it is already a weighty pen. Uh, very, very nice pen. And uh, I did say it's a cartridge converter there. So you can see that. Um, one thing, I, I have a love-hate relationship with converter pens. Um, the, the hate part of it is that I always find that they're running out of ink far too quickly because they only hold 0.7 milliliters of ink. Whereas a piston will normally be 1.2, 1 to 1.2 milliliters, almost double. And then a Paravac is normally 1.5 if it's a single reservoir, or 2.5 milliliters if it's a double reservoir. So uh, I have a hate, uh, sort of, uh, like a like hate relationship um, with, with um, uh, cartridge converters. Uh, I do, however, um, love them for the ease of uh, cleaning out. Um, and a lot less mechanically can go wrong with it. And if, if something goes wrong with a converter, you can just go and buy another converter. So it is a love-hate relationship. Um, I do typically write a lot, so when I write a lot, I prefer to have a pen that, that does hold more ink capacity. However, uh, I do have um, Visconti Travelling Inkwells. I do have Penida pen fillers, uh, so I can take the ink with me. Uh, and ink it up on the go if I need to. So uh, that gives me the best of both worlds with a cartridge converter pen because I then don't run out of ink that easy. Or if I do, I can refill it quite quickly. The next pen I have here inked up is the Visconti Opera Master Antarctica. Uh, I do love this pen a lot. Uh, I did win it for an insane price. Uh, I got it for 
I want to say about a third of probably the retail price. Um, it it really is a, a, a good good pen. I do like it. Uh, it is a Pavac, so it hold it's a double reservoir. It holds two and a half milliliters of ink. But the the pattern on here of the white sort of snow for Antarctica is is actually or the ice is is quite beautiful. Along with the the sort of light blue turquoisey, uh, also a de uh, de depiction of, of ice as well. Um, uh, it does have a double uh, reservoir here, uh, and that is doubles up as an ink window. You might just see a bubble there of ink or of air in that ink just rotating. Uh, it has a um, chrome uh, or silver um, section. These used to be uh, 23 cat um, uh, palladium plated, but I'm not so sure if it is still. Uh, they are, I, I think it is, um, but it, it does feel a little bit lighter than the older um, Visconti Opera Master sections. Uh, it comes with a Visconti uh, number six size. This is the newer in house 18 cat gold nib. Um, if you want to post the cap, you can, uh, but it does make it a bit back weighted because it doesn't post deeply, so it just makes the pen super long. Um, but I do like uh, the pen a lot. So I have that one inked up again this week. A beautiful pen. Uh, I got it for a really good price. I won it at an auction. You wouldn't, won't normally get a pen that cheap unless you're winning it at an auction or unless somebody is just trying to sell it for, for near to nothing. So, so I got it for a very good price and that also makes it a little bit more special to me as well. The next pen inked up uh, is a pen I had inked up last week. It's the Visconti Homo Sapiens Demo Stone in Sapphire Blue. Um, you don't have a gemstone there, but you do uh, have a um, uh, a Visconti My Pen Finial uh, Stone there. It's just a, a coloured piece of plastic. It's it's not a gemstone. Um, unlike maybe the Visconti St. Basil here, where it has actually a real ruby in there. Um Interesting enough on these demo stones, there's a number of things that they change. They they put the Visconti finial on the end here, the power vac knob, uh, because you've got the demo stone there. I'm a little bit mixed by that. I, I don't particularly like that there, but then again, I have other Viscontis that just had a, a metal uh, dome there or, or coin finial with nothing on it. So uh, I guess it's not that dissimilar, but I don't know. It just... It doesn't feel like the normal Visconti Homo Sapien to me. Um, it is a power back. It's a double reservoir filler, hook safe lock mechanism. Uh, but it also, the, the other difference here is it's got the a 14 karat gold nib. And it's got a, a cross emblem there on, uh, engraved into the nib. Um, it's a medium 14 karat gold nib from Visconti in-house nib. Um, I'm not particularly a fan of that cross. I prefer the Visconti Fleur. Uh, De Lee on there, but uh, it's it's I, I, there's no difference in it in terms of writing. Uh, you can post the cap on this. It is a Homo sapiens. You do have to be a bit careful because if if I now twist this, I'm actually unscrewing that power vac knob there. And if I just twisted it a few more times and then pulled it out, I would pull out the power vac knob. So you do have to be a little bit careful on posting those. But it's not as bad as, say, posting a piston if you were uh, having the cap engage onto the piston knob because you would not literally be turning it and either sucking up or ejecting ink out of the pen. The next pen I have inked up is the Visconti Daedalus. And uh, this, this was an interesting pen. I actually picked this up right before the pandemic started. So this was the London Pen Show in March. 2020 um michael from manuscript pens uh gave me uh, loaned me this i say gave i wish it was gave loaned me this for review i reviewed the pen the pandemic hit uh i couldn't get this pen and uh, a visconti alchemy back to him for quite some time it was about 18 months but very quickly i did say to michael hey look I'd like to buy this if if the offer is still open on this, uh, that uh, that the price for the pen, it was and I bought it and I really really do like it. So, so this is a, a beautiful pen. It, it is uh, the Daedalus, so you can see it there. It says Daedalus 
and you have the Minotaur's head there as well. And all of these silver uh, plates are basically the maze. Uh, it's an exquisite pen. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how did I come across such a beautiful pen or, or a great pen? And I hate to say it, but most of the time I say it's luck because I'm in the right place at the right time and a pen appears or somebody offers me a pen and I'm like, wow, I really want that pen. So in a lot of cases, I'm not hunting for a pen. They come to me. Uh, there is also a lot of time where I am hunting for a particular pen and want to get it. Um, something like the Inoto Great Court, for instance, uh, or even these two Yarder LEDs, uh, or a classic Pens LV5. So, so there is a mix of me hunting for the pen and pens coming to me. Uh, this one did come to me though. Uh, this has it's a it's a power vac. It's a double reservoir. Uh, it has uh, the 23 cap palladium nib there from Visconti uh, with a fleur de lis, and it's a medium nib. But it's a beautiful pen. You can post it, but look, that is an enormous pen. I don't know many people that would want to write with that pen being that long with uh, the cap being posted, uh, but you might want to. Um, uh, I have written with some like that, but I find them a little bit unwieldy to write with. A little bit back weighted as well, or quite back weighted. So um, it's I'm not I do not post my caps for that reason. The next pen inked up uh, this week is the Visconti Opera Master Savannah. Uh, it is running low. I will need to re-ink this. I will do um, a, a beautiful yellowy um, African yellow. Um, it, it just reminds me of Savannah or Africa. Uh, you have some yellow enamel there on the Visconti uh, name on the clip. Uh, beautiful pen. Again, I won this in auction, very similar to the Antarctica, both from Regini Martini, both for uh, what was a pretty good price. Uh, this one was a, a little bit more expensive, though, than the Antarctica in the end. Uh, I had a number of people trying to bid up uh, the, the uh, end of the auction price, uh, so I unfortunately had to pay a bit more, but... I still paid a lot less than I would have if I bought it brand new from a retailer. Uh, it is a power vac filler. Um, it is a double reservoir, although you don't get the ink window on the Savannah, though. Uh, well, you do, but it's um, like it's obscured a bit, a little bit more than the Antarctica. Uh, you've got the chrome section here. You've got a number six size Visconti. It's a newer 18 karat gold in-house nib from Visconti. Uh, and that's a broad nib. Um, you can also uh, post the cap as well if you want to. Um, again, I'm not. It's it's a long pen. Uh, if you post the cap like that, uh, and it's going to be back weighted. Like this is halfway down the pen, so with the cap on, so it's really acting like a seesaw on on my hand. So uh, I'm not a fan of having uh, back weighted pens. So uh, I don't normally post the caps for that reason uh the next pen i have uh, inked up is a yard of lead and i've wanted one of these oh for since i i almost since i started collecting um so that was what june 2016 so 2017 18 19 21 22 we're in 23 now so almost seven years probably five six years ago uh i saw one of these and wanted one of these uh they were um Around a, at that price, retail around about 700, 750 pound. Uh, they skyrocketed in between 2020 and 2022 around the pandemic to uh, around about 1250 pound. I got this second hand. Uh, I really like it. Uh, and I also picked up the, um, this is the Grand Viceroy and this is the Victorian. I also picked up the Barley Corn at the same time. Uh, now, it is a push-to-click cap. Uh, I'm not a fan of them, to be honest. Uh, I do think sometimes those caps are either too tight or not tight enough. Uh, this one wasn't quite tight enough. Um, uh, it's got an 18 karat gold, yard of lead, uh, fine nib there. A uh, little bit uh, of ink there uh, around um, the the body uh, or section there. Um, it is a cartridge converter pen. 
Uh, can you post the cap? Yeah, you can. And it posts quite deeply. Almost you can't see where the caps start. But it is still back weighted. So again, I'm not um, normally going to post that cap. But this is a beautiful pen. It's a work of art. Uh, over, I think it was over three and a half thousand hammer strikes to get this kind of texture to this pen. All manual hammer strikes from a silversmith. Absolutely amazing. So uh, uh, I do like that. I'm so glad I was able to add one to my collection in 2022. Uh, also at the same time, I picked up the Yarder lead, and uh, this is the Grand uh, uh, Viceroy in the barley corn or barley for short again another beautiful pen i don't think it for me it's as beautiful as the victorian um but it's a lovely barley type pattern going on here that you can see very much like a little bit like a herringbone uh, approach there um again it's solid silver ag925 uh beautiful it's made uh both of these are made uh, in the jewellery quarter in Birmingham in the UK. Uh, that's where Yard of Lead are, uh, and that's where Anoto uh, Silversmiths are as well. Um, it's a beautiful pen, and uh, I have to say I do like it. Um, the It's a push-to-click. It's a little bit more stronger, this one. Uh, again, it's got a, a number six size Yard of Lead nib. It's a medium nib on this one. Cartridge converter. And again, you can post the cap and it will post quite deeply. Uh, but again, it does feel quite back weighted, a little bit like a seesaw in, in my hand, although the cap itself is quite light. But once you add that light cap to the back of the body here, it does actually feel more back weighted than it actually probably is. The next pen inked up is uh, the Classic Pens LB5 in the KN. These sell for insane prices now. I know a number of people that have uh, sold uh, their pens uh, for five thousand pound or dollars. Uh, some being advertised up to eight thousand with the specialty nibs, like a Concord or a um, Cross nib. Um, I, I just, I think it's way too much money, even five thousand for this. Uh, it is a resin pen. It's diffusion bonded acrylic or resin, but. It is a resin pen, essentially. Um, but it is made by Sailor. So uh, if I show you here, it says Sailor LB5 uh, KN uh, 3850. Uh, so this is made by Sailor for classic pens. Uh, the, all the LB5s were 50 are made in each of the colors. I think there were five, four or five colors. Uh, and then it's a Sailor King of Pen nib there. Uh, this is a medium nib. It's a cartridge converter pen. I'll show you that there as well. So you've got the King of Pen uh, or Sailor converter there. Um, you can post the cap. It does post quite deeply and securely. Um, so if if you want to, you can. I still find this is a little bit back weighted because there's quite a bit of metal here uh, on that, that cap. But uh, I have that one inked up this week as well. I do love writing with that. I do love writing with Sailor King of Pen nibs. The next pen here is the Visconti and it's the St. Basil. Beautiful celluloid material here. Lovely blues, blacks, uh, reds, a little bit of purple there. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, I do love this pen a lot. It has a lot of gold trim on there. Uh, a lot of gold inlay as well or inset there with the St. Basil, and then obviously some, some writing there in in Russian as well. Um, beautiful pen. It does have a real uh, ruby gemstone there, which is cut. Uh, and then you just have basically the, um, the limited edition number there. Um, it is a power back filler. Um, it is a double reservoir as well. Um, it has a number six size for Sconti. And this is the 23 cap palladium medium nib. Can you post a cap? No, it's not designed to do so. There's no way you're going to post that cap. Uh, but uh, it is a, a beautiful, beautiful pen, beautiful work of art. Uh, I love the celluloid and I love the ins the sort of uh, inscription here as well. Very, very nice pen. And uh, have that one inked up with me this week as well. 
And then the last pen is uh, another pen I had inked up last week. It's a Visconti. It's an Opera Master. Uh, it's a Stardust. Uh, this was an exclusive from Chris at True Fay. And if I try to find it, uh, I'm trying to find... Ah, it's actually... I was thinking it was on the uh, uh, Powervac knob here. It's not, actually. The limited edition number is actually here on the cap. It's gone to change where they put it. It's number 7 of 28. So only 28 of these were ever made. Uh, it was a retailer, Truffet exclusive, uh, with the Visconti, uh, my pen finial there. Uh, all in ruthenium black trim. I think that really makes it look nice. Uh, sort of a gunmetal-like uh, trim, really. Uh, I love the material. It is like a stardust. It really is beautifully, beautifully made. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who made this material. Uh, I kind of want to think it might have been Jonathan Brooks, um, but I suspect it's not. Um, I never actually heard who actually made this material. This was a little bit before, I think, Visconti started partnering up with Jonathan Brooks on a few of the pens. Uh, but this is a beautiful, beautiful pen. Uh, it's a Paravac, it's a double reservoir there, silver section, although ruthenium uh, plated. And then you've got a ruthenium plated nib. It's a 23 cap palladium, 1.3 millimeter stub nib. Uh, great pen though. Uh, I don't, uh, you can post the cap if you want to. It won't post that deeply, but you can post it. Um, I don't write with this as much as I should. I've got a lot of 1.3 millimeter stub nibs in my collection. A lot of them are Visconti Opera Masters. Uh, I typically, uh, nowadays write a bit smaller, so I typically prefer a medium or a fine nib, uh, and I typically will write in five to seven millimeter line width, and I I struggle doing that with um, the one point three millimeter stub nibs. I typically have to go to an eight millimeter ruling uh, if I am to do that. I can do that. I can uh, I can when I'm writing letters, I'm writing on plain paper. I've got eight millimeter guide rules I can put under the sheet of paper. Uh, and do my own line ruling that way, uh, but I, I just I typically do like seven millimeter ruling most of the time, uh, and uh, I say eight millimeter. I think it's more eight to ten, um, but I, I do I do struggle uh, with uh, writing in smaller line widths with a, a one point three millimeter stub nib. So there you have it. That's my current ink pens for this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen I have inked up this week is the Anoto British Museum Great Court. So I think let's go and do a writing sample, but we'll do an ink swatch first. Now, this is a really beautiful turquoise ink. Uh, I'd be interested to hear what your favourite turquoise inks are, if you do have favourite turquoise inks. For me, this has become my favourite so this is the Anoto British Museum Great Court and it is a fine and it's an 18 cat gold uh, nib and uh, the ink in here is uh, Venvistus or Venvustus and it is Aqua the Spargy. But that to me is uh, has become my favourite blue uh, turquoise ink. It's an ink that I really do like a lot. Uh, the next pen inked up is the Visconti Opera Master Antarctica. Now, uh, we'll do an ink swatch on here. Um, I'm actually just going to open the power back knob on this one. Just to get the ink flowing a little bit more. Now, uh, this is, I'd say, my second favourite, actually, turquoise blue coloured ink. Uh, this is, uh, again, another nice blue ink. So, this is the uh, Visconti, and it is the uh, Opera Master. Uh, I actually just noticed I've got something, some paper fibres, stuck between the tines there i think that may have just i may have just pulled that out let's give that a try uh and it's the uh antarctica 
and uh, this is a medium and it is the uh, newer 18 cat gold uh, in-house nibs from Visconti and then the ink in here is uh, Visconti turquoise which I said is second best um, I I do like uh, both of those inks I think you will notice that both of those inks will look pretty similar I do wonder if they are the same ink to be honest uh, they're very 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 close uh, in in terms of color the next pen inked up is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Demo Stones in Sapphire Blue. And we'll do an ink swatch here. And uh, guess what? We also have this in uh, the same Visconti Turquoise. Um, but you probably will see it maybe a little bit variance here. Because uh, this is a, a wetter writing nib. So this is the uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens demo stones uh, in sapphire, and it is a medium and it's a 14 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is the same Visconti turquoise. But it'll be interesting to see when these have dried. I do typically find in this pen. Uh, the Visconti Turquoise looks a little bit darker than what is in the Antarctica pen, but still, it's uh, quite um, quite similar in colour. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Daedalus. So we'll do uh, another ink swatch here. Now, this is a much, much darker blue. Uh, if somebody said a blue ink, this is probably what I would uh, realise as a blue ink. So this is the Visconti Daedalus. And uh, it is a medium and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. Uh, most palladium nibs are very, very bouncy. This one is not. It's very, very firm. Uh, and then the ink in here is Visconti Blue. Uh, which uh, I think came with the pen. Um, I, I do have a few bottles of Visconti Blue because I've had it with the other pens as well. Um, but it is a nice uh, colour. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Opera Master Savannah. So we'll do an ink swatch. And uh, this uh, is a lovely sort of yellowy uh, coloured ink. Uh, so this is the uh, Visconti Opera Master Savannah. And it's a broad, and it's the newer 18 cat gold in-house nibs from Visconti. And then the ink in here is Lamy Mango, which personally I think is a very good match uh, for the broad nib on here. I think if I were to get another yellowy or mango or apricot coloured pen, I would get it in a broad nib and I would probably put Lamy Mango in there. It's a beautiful colour. The next pen inked up is the Yard of Lead and this is the, the Viceroy Grand in the Victorian. So we'll do an ink swatch. Uh, now, this is a fine nib and I bought this second hand, so I didn't have the option of choosing the nib width on this. Uh, I kind of wanted it really in a medium, um, but uh, it was a fine. So I decided I would put in a uh, reddish orange or orangish red ink. So this is the Yard O Lead, and it's the uh, Viceroy Grand. Or is it Grand Viceroy? I don't really know. Um, and it's the Victorian. And uh, it's a fine and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And then the uh, ink in here is uh, Noodler's Habanero. Which uh, is an ink that outside of this pen I haven't actually used for a long time. 
And I decided I would ink it up in this pen quite a while ago. And I've just stuck with that ink in that pen. The next pen inked up is the Yarda Lead. And this again is a Viceroy Grand. But this is in the Barley Corn or Barley. So we'll do an ink swatch on here. Now this is more the nib that I really wanted. Uh, this is a medium nib, but it actually writes more like a broad. Um, I can swap these nibs over these sections. They're identical. So I can swap them between pens if I want to. Uh, so this is the Yard a Lead. Uh, and it's the uh, Viceroy. And it is getting a little bit low on ink. Uh, Grand. Uh, and it's a Barley. I also do find that this nib uh, will hard start and skip more. It's a little bit more of a polished or over polished nib. Um, so we'll do uh, it's a medium and there you go, see, and it's an 18 cap gold nib. Now, typically, when it's getting low, it will skip more. I can unscrew it and just prime the piston or the converter a bit more, and that sometimes will help. Uh, the ink in here is uh, Rora. And Klinger, and it is a Verdura, which is a lovely green ink that I do like, and I have to say I like having it inked up in that pen a lot. The next pen I have inked up is the Classic Pens LB5 in the KN. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now this, uh, it's a medium nib, but it's an, an Asian nib. So typically writes a little bit more uh, towards a fine Western nib. Um, it's the classic pens LB5 in the KN. Uh, and it's a medium. And uh, it's a 21 count gold nib because it is made by Sailor. Uh, and... Oh, it's, it, it is a sailor nib, I should say. Uh, the ink in here is uh, Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. Now, I do have another pen inked up with that same ink, and I will show you that one now. Um, that is the Visconti St. Basil. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch, and it will be interesting to see when these inks have dried, the difference in colour. Because I typically find that the Classic Pens LB5 writes more towards the red that I like. Um, not that I dislike the St. Basil it, uh, in terms of how it writes with the same ink. But I just prefer the lighter red. But it does dry a darker red over time. Uh, so this is the uh, Visconti St. Basil. Uh, it's a medium, and it's a 23 cat palladium nib. And then the ink in here again is Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. And then the last pen inked up is the Visconti Opera Master Stardust. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is one honker of a, a wide nib. So this is the Visconti Opera Master, uh, and it's a Stardust, and it's a 1.3 millimeter stub nib. Uh, it's a 23 cat palladium nib, uh, and then the ink in here is a uh, diamine. Merlot, which is a very nice dark red ink, and I think it kind of matches this pen quite well. So I think let's take another look at these pens inked up one more time. We have an Anoto British Museum Great Court uh, in a fine 18 count gold nib inked up with Venvustus Aqua di Spargi. We have a Visconti Opera Master Antarctica in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Visconti Turquoise. And you can see, there really is no difference between the colour of these two pens. 
We have another Visconti Homo Sapiens Demo Stone Sapphire in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with Visconti Turquoise. Now you can see a slight difference between the two here and that's mostly because of the nib width and how it writes. We have a Visconti Daedalus in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Visconti Blue. We have a Visconti Opera Master Savannah in a broad 18 cat gold nib inked up with Lamy Mango. We have a Yarda Lead Viceroy Grand Victorian in a fine 18 cat gold nib inked up with Noodler's Habanero. We have another Yarda Lead and this is the Grand Barley uh, Viceroy in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Roar and Klinger Verdura. We have a Classic Pens LB5 in the KN in a medium 21 count gold nib inked up with Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. We have a Visconti St. Basil in a medium 23 count palladium nib inked up with Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. Uh, and again, like you will see a slight difference. This one's a little bit more lighter. And then last but not least, we have a Visconti Opera Master Stardust in a 1.3 millimeter 23 count palladium stub nib inked up with Diamine Merlot. So there you have it. That's my current ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.